Hey fellow gardeners, Dawn here from Seasonal Designs. It is a pretty chilly day here in the middle of April. Actually, it's the 22nd. It uh, says it's 40 degrees outside, but it feels like it's colder than that. There's a really cold breeze off the lake and it really is just kind of a chilly day, very overcast. I thought today would be a good day just to kind of take a walk around and for me to kind of talk about some of the major projects that we'll be working on this year. Now you might remember two falls ago, so two years ago, the greenhouse got put up and then last summer, we were able to put in the landscaping around the greenhouse. Then this past fall, I started planting some bulbs here where you see me standing and behind me, but I have a couple of other projects that I have been working on. One that is in the front yard where was what was once kind of the entryway to come back to this project through the prairie. I want to talk about the prairie, the burning that we've done and the seeds that I have been putting in. I also will show you what I've got going on in the greenhouse. Just a couple of things that are on like my major project list for this year. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Well, I thought we would start by talking about the prairie and I am standing at the edge of my prairie looking kind of over uh, part of the prairie here and then the greenhouse and then our house and part of the lawn. And you can see in front of me where we had a section of this prairie burned. And you can see the things that are starting to green up here. But I also have a lot of trees that have seeded in here and you can easily see them now. And I need to come through, I need to cut these at the base and I need to dab them with some a little bit of stump killer because I really don't want trees growing in here. So you can see where I have a lot of work to do here. The other thing that I've done is I have seeded this again. So what I'm trying to do in this side of the prairie is really kind of take it back and, and change what's in here a little bit because the goldenrod got totally out of hand here. So I've been cutting it down when it is in full bloom and then in spring, burning everything off of this area and reseeding it with things that I want. But it is things that only need a dry stratification. So they don't need a cold, they don't need a wet, because that would require a full year because they would need the rain, they'd need winter, and then hopefully they would start germinating the following spring. I did just get my order in from Prairie Moon Nursery, and I know a lot of you were interested in where I get my seed from, and here's their information. They'll send you a packing list. They'll send you their germination codes and seed starting basics for natives, and I find this very helpful. Um, and it'll give you tips on starting from seed and outdoor sowing. And it gives all of their germination codes, which I think is super helpful. So germination code A can germinate without a pretreatment, and it has a list of all of the grasses and flowers that can um, do that, but it is a really handy packet to have. Here's all the germination codes on the back. So what I'm planting this time are, is everything that is germination code A, which means it really does not require any pretreatment. It just is a dry treatment. So once I throw this out there in the field, it will hopefully germinate this year. What I ordered was a big package of this purple prairie clover. clover. We have a couple of patches of this in the prairie and I really like this. And I'd like to add a few more um, pockets of it. We also have this showy tick trefoil. I have an aromatic aster. I have a small packet of the tall larkspur. This stuff was expensive. 
and I have a packet of wild bergamot. It's really pretty easy to do. You just grab a handful, decide where you want it, and you just hand broadcast it. And I'm gonna do a couple of different pockets of this, but it's pretty easy. The rest of the prairie got cut about oh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago maybe, and you can see it's already looking green with the snow and the rain that we got provides really good moisture. There are flowers that are coming up already, like here's one right here. This is a little couple of lupins coming up right here. And you'll see these kind of all over the prairie. That is gonna be the first flower that is going to bloom here. Well, here's a nice big patch of lupin. You can see them all coming. There's just a lot of them. I mean, this whole area right here is just filled with a number of lupin starting. And now I'm standing kind of down a hill that you never see when I do my videos because it's way back at the end of our prairie and it kind of slopes down a hill. And so this whole side of the hill here, you can see with the brown, is all little blue stem. And it But we have all of this cut for us with a tractor because just so that you can get an idea of how big it is. I mean, it is several acres. It's about seven or eight acres. So we do have someone come in and cut this down. You'll see where I kind of come up to this lovely pocket of pines here. And then you can see, you get to start to get a glimpse of the greenhouse and the rest of the prairie. I'm standing here at the back patio and I, we're going to go into the greenhouse. I did, there was a number of things I was able to put up into larger size pots today, but I wanted to talk about another project that we are going to be doing here. We're going to extend the walkway here on this side to the patio here so that as we're entertaining here or going from the kitchen out to the greenhouse, we don't have to always walk through the lawn. Take that stone and just kind of extend it. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll have it set into the grass and then just mow right over it. Sort of like what we have started here. Things are, things are popping. Things are getting bigger. And I'll kind of show you what I was what I've got going on in here. Other than the things that I, you know, I have my violas growing and I have some beautiful geraniums that I started. Aren't they beautiful? I love the color. And just some different things that I have up here on my potting bench. Uh, I also have some dahlias, so the dahlia experiment that I did a video on. You know, I stored the tubers in a plastic bag in the basement and that's all I did. And there were four tubers and I planted all four of them and they are all doing very well. There's two here, there's another one there, and then I've got one more over here. One of the things I needed was kind of additional growing area, so I chose to add a shelving unit in here and it is, it has four shelves on it, so it's just kind of the right size. I chose a dark one to kind of match the frame um, of the greenhouse because I ran out of room on there. And so I thought, you know, let's, let's add something and go up and go vertically. And so far it's been working really well. And I also have my beautiful clematis in here and I'm so excited because look at you guys. It has buds already. So it is, what, April 22nd, I think, today. And I have been growing that in the greenhouse. It is doing so well. It is going to bloom early. I know I probably should put it outside so it acclimates. And I will eventually, but I'm so excited to have it bloom. I'm just, I'm going to just let it go in here. And then over here, these I really have not potted up to a larger size and you can see that I need to do that because look at 
all of the snapdragons that I have. Like some cells have four or five. I mean, I must have did a terrible job spreading these out. And then like this doesn't have any, oh no, there is one tiny one right there and a tiny one right there. They're so, they're so sporadic and they're coming up at such different times this, this year. It's kind of weird. You can see I have three kind of flats of them. And I am going to, this is something I do need to pot these up into larger sizes and I'll maybe do that tomorrow. These are my ranunculus, and those I just potted up into larger containers. And then I have some sweet peas down here. And this is sea holly. This is, these were bare root. This is a patch of bare root perennials that I planted. Fig is doing so well right now, so well. I mean, look at the size of this fig coming already. Isn't that awesome? Oh, there's another one. Oh gosh, it is doing so well, which is very exciting to me. And I potted up everything you see here, got potted up from the seed starting trays to larger trays um, just today. So these are all of my zinnias and this row is giant pink. This row is the giant rose. And this row is the queen red lime. And then I had a number of kohlrabi and I don't know if they really liked being transplanted, but I just did it. So we'll give them a little bit of time to perk back up, but I have way too many. <laughs> Robbie, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of them. Oh, 15, 60. Oh my God, I have 17 Kalarabi. Like, seriously, I love Kalarabi. And soon I will get them into the garden and probably put like um, a frost cloth over my garden. But I really didn't intend to have 17 of them. But hey, I love them. I eat kohlrabi raw. I, I love to go out to the garden, pull one out, peel it and eat it. I like to eat it when they're smaller and they're tender. Oh, I just love them. But anyways, so this was a tomato that actually was growing in with one of my kohlrabi. So I really don't know what variety it is. This is my violas. This is a mix of violas. You can see I'm starting to get little buds on these. So these are my Cosmos. Some of them are a little lanky, but I think they'll be all right. And then this tray is uh, vegetables. So I've got a couple of different tomatoes. I've got a 4th of, uh, of July hybrid tomato. I have a couple of sweet 100s. I have a green bean, which looks terrible, but I thought, well, we'll see what happens. This is another uh, green bean. And then I have some summer squash that I really had to pot up to the next size. And those are looking really good. Still a wonderful mix of growing and entertaining. We just had a few people here for lunch today, really enjoying the space. Well, this little bed here out front in the center of my walkways to the greenhouse, remember this is my annual bed. So every year I'm gonna just plant something different in it and Last, not last year, the year before last, I planted daffodil bulbs in here and nothing came up, like nothing came up. And I thought, well, that's, that kind of sucks. Um, and this year they started coming up. So I don't know if they just needed a, a year, an extra year. I thought maybe, gosh, I planted them too deep. I don't know. But these are little teatees and aren't they just, aren't they pretty? And then I have some silica in here. Or 
And I do see that I have a tulip over there. In fact, you know, we have such bad deer pressure here that it's really hard for me to grow tulips. But I thought, well, maybe if I plant up a bunch of things that deer don't like, like daffodils, and then throw some tulips in, maybe the deer will leave them alone. So I don't know. Then I did the same thing over here where I planted up a bunch of daffodils and I threw in just a couple of tulips to see what would happen. So my goal here is really to cover this whole area in through here all the way maybe up to the path where the path starts into the prairie and just keep adding more daffodils. And this was just a mix I bought from Longfield Gardens. Has a number of different uh, daffodil types in it. Just kind of show you some of these. I don't have the names, but let me see if I can find the names and I can always pop them up, but whoop, aren't they pretty? And then there's a white. Here, this one is a white with a yellow. Oh, they're just so gorgeous. I just love looking and seeing all the different varieties here. And then what I'd like to do is I would like to add more of that purple-ish blue silica and then more of those little orange tulips I showed you. I think that if I could just fill this up with that, provided I can remember where, where I have stuff, I think it just would be so pretty. And then what will happen is as the foliage is dying back, the grasses and the flowers that are in here we'll cover it and hide it. We'll see how it looks. I thought I'd start with a couple hundred and just kind of see how it looks. And if I like it, I'll probably do something very similar on the other side of the greenhouse as well. And my thought is, is underneath or around kind of this pine tree over here, maybe have kind of the same look. look. And this whole section, like right in here, I don't like how wild and woolly it is. It's still prairie versus my kind of controlled earthy native plantings. So I'm gonna get rid of this whole section right here and I'm just gonna extend this bed so that it comes out a little bit further and my prairie kind of blends in a little further off to the left. Well, let's talk about my project here. So my idea, now that we don't need a big access right away into the greenhouse, I still need to leave access for a vehicle to get into the greenhouse area should we need to, as well as for the tractor that comes in to cut our field every year, because this right here is the only access point. So I have to make sure I leave enough of an area there so that wheeled traffic can get in there if needed. But my idea here is I'm going to clean up my path that kind of meanders between this center bed and the woodland area. You can, don't look, I have a lot of dandelions and weeds I have to take care of. The only thing I've done here is kind of cut everything back. I really, I do need to do a little bit more work out here. My idea here is this path is going to just kind of come in and meander around where it'll transition to grass and you can kind of come out. And then this area here, I plan on having it really be a bed. I want it to kind of go up into this rocky area where you can see I have some bulbs, find little nooks and crannies where I can pop bulbs from pots that I use. So I'll be cleaning this area up and we're gonna clean some of this stuff up here in the back. And then this will get planted with probably some trees as well as bushes and then some more of um, perennials. And then this area over here, I will mow part of this and part of that is prairie. So my idea here is that this will transition from kind of a lawn look and it will kind of transition out past where my raised beds are and then that it will just be prairie. You can see I've got work to do here. This bed got replaced and it looks good except for it needs to get painted and then that second bed back there is falling apart. So we need to 
get that cleaned up. I think I want to paint these either the color of my shed or maybe the color of these planters that I was able to position here. And what I'd like to do is I, this is just kind of a little entryway, I guess. We originally, my husband bought these. He thought they'd be great for in front of the greenhouse. And while I really love kind of how rustic they look, they're very, they're a bit more modern, number one. And number two, they're really tall. And, you know, I didn't want to discourage him because he was so excited to find these. And I, I really like them. I just didn't know if it was what we wanted for in front of the greenhouse. And you know the urns I put out there, which I love. But I really do like these and I feel like they needed a space. And I thought they might look really nice at kind of this little entrance here to the garden beds. So anyways, I'm gonna clean this area up here and I am going to take you guys along for that project. So I'll take you along for what we're going to do here. I think it will be really nice to get this done this year. Well, the last few minutes of this video are going to be of things that are actually blooming in the yard. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.